Okay, so LG recently sent me a sample of their C9, their OLED 4K C9 TV. This is the successor to their very popular C8 model from 2018. This is the new 2019 model. And there's already been a lot of content floating around the internet about this TV and how it performs for home theater purposes, watching movies and you know Netflix streaming and all that sort of thing. But today I'm gonna specifically focus on gaming content and what it's like to game on this behemoth of a TV. For years, there's been a growing interest in gaming in the living room or from a couch, uh, whether it be on a console or PC. Today I'm gonna mainly focus on PC gaming because that's kind of what we're mostly about here on the channel, but I'll also touch on some console details as well. The LG OLED C9 is a 4K native 120 hertz refresh rate display. It can do both of those specs simultaneously over its single HDMI 2.1 port. It's got a couple other HDMI 2.0 ports as well, but the 2.1 is a new addition on the C9 that was not available on the C8. While this is super exciting at first glance, unfortunately you can't actually utilize that on a PC because the current generation of RTX graphics cards from Nvidia and even the RX Vega uh, GPUs from AMD do not support 4K 120 hertz over HDMI 2.1. They only support it over their DisplayPort 1.4 connection, which is a port that the TV completely lacks. Uh, DisplayPort's just not very common on TVs. I wish that would change very soon. What this means is even a high-end gaming PC can only game on this TV at a maximum of 4K 60 hertz or 1440p 120 hertz. And that's over the HDMI 2.0b connection that both of those video card families have. Unfortunately, Additionally, AMD's upcoming RX 5700 series GPUs are also not going to be getting an HDMI 2.1 treatment from the looks of it. Uh, they're going to be using a very similar display controller as the RX Vega series, so that kind of sucks. Doubling down on the bad news, the LG C9 also lacks any kind of FreeSync support. Although it does have HDMI VRR, variable refresh rate, that is an HDMI forum spec that is similar to FreeSync, but it's not FreeSync, and it doesn't currently work with any PCs. In fact, as of now, at the time of filming, the only device that can really leverage this technology with this display is the Xbox One. And yes, the Xbox One only has an HDMI 2.0 port, but early last year, there was a software update that allowed that port to take advantage of certain limited HDMI 2.1 features, such as HDMI VRR and FreeSync, of course. While it's not listed on the manufacturer's page, I've seen several articles point out that the refresh rate range is 40 to 120 hertz with HDMI VRR, which isn't great, at least on the low end, but it's better than nothing. What's kind of frustrating is that the Xbox One doesn't really have the horsepower to drive most games at 120 FPS at 4K, so it seems like kind of a wasted technology on this platform. However, there's the whole streaming and media consumption thing where if you can find 4K 120 FPS content for uh, video playback, for example, then the platform is gonna support it and that's kinda cool. That being said, we should see HDMI 2.1 in full effect on the next generation of consoles, which will be more equipped to actually push those boundaries. The other feature that HDMI 2.1 brings to the table is ALLM, or Auto Low Latency Mode, which automatically kicks your TV into its low input lag state. A lot of TVs call this game mode, uh, but it'll automatically kick it into that mode anytime it detects a supported device is being fired up. So it just kinda saves you a couple extra steps of having to go into your TV settings and selecting game mode anytime you want to jump into a game. Now this would not be a content piece on OLED technology without talking about black levels, because right now OLED displays are the undisputed champ when it comes to producing the richest, purest, truest blacks on the market. Of course we've got micro LED technology, which is supposed to offer a lot of the benefits, but none of the, the risks of screen burn-in that OLED has. However, it's still a very new technology that's very expensive, and so it's gonna be a while until the pricing on that comes down to be a more mainstream tech that is uh, truly competitive with OLEDs. But OLED pixels are awesome because they each produce an their own light source. Instead of relying on a backlight with local dimming zones like an LED LCD display does, you can independently turn on and off pixels that are side by side, right next to each other, so you effectively have perfect contrast without any kind of halo effect that's found on other panel tech. If you've never witnessed it in person, it's absolutely jaw-dropping the first time you see it. Regardless of the medium, whether it be TV, streaming, Blu-ray, gaming, when I was playing Resident Evil 2 during this test, I was blown away how much more clearly I could see enemies lurking in the shadows or darker areas of the environment because of how phenomenally good the contrast was. Another perfect example is that the cinematography from the Game of Thrones Battle of Winterfell episode looks phenomenal. You can actually watch it. You can see everything that's going on in pure detail. It looks so good and it's much more enjoyable to watch. Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything to help the writing. 
This is easily the biggest selling point of OLED displays like the C9, and it's exactly why people put up with the risks of burn-in because the image quality looks so much better than anything they've ever seen previously. Throwing a game up on one of these screens looks infinitely better, not just compared to an LED LCD TV equivalent, but even the most top-of-the-line high-end $1,200 curved IPS or VA gaming monitors out there pale in comparison to how a game looks on one of these TVs. And speaking of, there's another big trick up the C9 sleeve that current high-end gaming monitors just don't have, and that is true HDR support. I mean, we've got support for HDR10, HLG, Advanced HDR, Dolby Vision, all crammed into this beautiful unit to deliver true HDR experiences and images, not like the HDR400 spec that you see on gaming monitors that quite frankly looks like garbage most of the time. Now there is a bit of a caveat here in the sense that HDR comes at a cost of additional bandwidth. Bandwidth that we have a limited amount of over our HDMI 2.0B connection, uh, which is about 18 gigabits per second. After fiddling around with the settings in the NVIDIA control panel, I was able to get HDR working in Windows 10 at 4K 60Hz 12-bit with 420 chroma subsampling. Now bear in mind you can crank any of these settings up and down to your heart's content as long as you're staying within the bandwidth limitations. So for a faster gaming experience, I was able to get HDR working at 1080p 120Hz with RGB subsampling at 12-bit color depth. A point of confusion for me here is that the LG C9 is a native 10-bit panel, yet there was no 10-bit option in NVIDIA control panel. I only had the options for 8 or 12-bit. I'm not exactly sure how we get to 12-bit with a 10-bit panel. Perhaps there's some dithering going on here that I don't know about. At any rate, I'm not going to complain about uh, more color depth, so I just took it for what it was and moved on. And I mean, just the end result in action is mind-blowing. I mean, look at these before and after screenshots of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is an officially HDR-supported game. Um, absolutely stunning. The images kind of speak for themselves. There was a breathtaking improvement here that, that extended the reach of the highlights and the shadows uh, and the colors just across the whole spectrum. It really gave life to the environment and it just makes the image pop. It's pure ecstasy for your eyes. It should be outlawed. The results in Battlefield 5, which also supports HDR, were equally awesome. However, there was a, a capturing issue where anytime I tried to capture the gameplay with OBS or XSplit or even do a print screen, the outputted file did not look anything like what I was seeing on screen. And my wife confirmed it. She's like, nope, there's something wrong. So the best I could do was point a camera at it and show you guys that way, but I know that's, that's kind of useless. So sorry about that. But rest assured, the dynamic range was vastly improved. And what I noticed in Battlefield 5 specifically is that objects that are supposed to be bright are bright. Like if you look directly into the sun or the street lamp that's you know reflecting light off the snow, it's actually bright. You kind of have to squint a little bit. So you're really getting a broader sense, not just of colors, but of like peak luminance and uh, everything coming together just looks so much nicer and, and much more immersive. Now, if you're a serious gamer, you're probably not just interested in how the panel looks, but how fast it is as well. And fortunately, the pixels on this OLED display are incredibly fast. Our teams found that a 100% color to color transition took 2.4 milliseconds. That's really, really good, even for a gaming monitor, not just by TV standards. What this super fast pixel motion response translates to is effectively zero perceptible motion blur. It doesn't matter if I was dancing around like a monkey in Doom or doing 360 no scopes or trying to in a game like CSGO, everything was completely sharp, no motion blur whatsoever, it's awesome. Input lag, which is something a lot of TVs suffer from, granted it's been getting better with low input lag states like game mode and such, the input lag here is equally impressive. Again, these numbers are from rtings.com. We have 13 milliseconds at 4K 60 Hertz and just six to seven milliseconds, whether you're gaming at 1080p or 1440p at 120 Hertz. The gaming experience at 4K 60 Hertz is plenty fast for my needs. It's gonna be more than adequate for the majority of gamers. It's super responsive. However, if you're privy to even more speed, lowering the resolution, say to 1440p, so you can up the refresh rate to 120 Hertz, makes this thing an absolute animal. It is so fast, at 120 hertz, this thing rivals the most high-end, sought-after gaming monitors tailored for speed that are on the market here in 2019. It's, it's ridiculous how fast this display is. Plus, you're getting those inky black contrast levels and that true HDR support. Altogether, this is the best gaming display that you can put inside your living room. But to be fair, let's address the, the number one reason why most people might say not to game on an OLED display. Screen burn-in, which is basically permanent image retention. It's the infamous Achilles heel of OLED panels. Uh, and this can be caused from having the same static image on screen for really long periods of time. 
and eventually that static image will leave a ghosting residue of sorts uh, that will permanently be baked into the screen. Some examples of this might be like a TV network logo that's wedged into the corner of the screen and it's just sitting there. Or on the gaming side, I always imagine like a HUD, like an in-game HUD, uh, whether it be a mini map or whatever else. Our team's found that just four to 5,000 hours of a static image being shown on screen was enough to cause burn-in. But you have to bear in mind that these are extreme use case scenarios. For Arting's testing, they actually had the same static image on screen for 20 hours a day for days on end until it racked up about four to 5,000 hours, however many days that, that translates to. So unless you fall under that extreme use case scenario, most users are gonna be completely fine and safe from screen burn-in, especially because there's a lot more technology built into these TVs now. Manufacturers like LG and Sony have integrated new technologies to help alleviate and prevent burn-in from happening. But I think the biggest defense against screen burn-in, in my opinion, is mindful usage. If you're mindful and conscientious of how you're using your TV, making sure not to let any logos or static images on screen for too long, that's really the best preventative measure you can take to avoiding burn-in altogether. One example on the gaming side is that if you play a title with a static HUD, you might be able to go into the game settings and adjust the brightness or the opacity of said HUD, or remove it entirely if you don't absolutely need it. And this would obviously help eliminate any possibility of screen burn-in occurring from that particular object. When it comes down to it, burn-in is not a myth. It's a very real, serious issue, but it's also an issue that only affects a very small percentage of users. And if you think you might be susceptible to burn-in because of your viewing habits, then OLED tech is probably not for you and you should look for something else. Uh, that being said, if you're willing to use your TV with a degree of caution and be more mindful with how you use it, I firmly believe that the performance benefits you get in exchange are very well worth it. Again, the two major shortcomings of this TV as a gaming display include the lack of any variable refresh rate technology that's supported on PC, which is understandably a deal breaker for some people, and the fact that there's currently no way to game at 4K 120 hertz on a PC if that's the spec you're trying to hit. However, if you can live with those compromises, I would 110% recommend this display for gaming. There's probably other OLED TVs on the market that will come close or even match the OLED C9, but for the most part, this is it. This is the ceiling if you're trying to game from your couch. But that's it guys, let me know what you think about this thing in the comments. If you have any experiences with OLEDs or burn-in yourself, feel free to let us know down below and uh, toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it, it helps a lot. Get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon and I will see you guys in the next video.